everyone and welcome back to the show. I'm Maddie. Hello, I'm Greg and all together now we, we are, are live. live. Um, and of course, hello if you are watching back later. Thank you so much for joining us. We've reached day five of our first week, guys. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. What a week it has been. I, oh. I've absolutely loved every minute of it. It's yeah. amazing. Um, thank you so, so much for getting in touch. So many of you have been planting seeds, making bird uh -huh. feeders, hunting for mini beasts, uh, identifying birds. <laughs> it's just been wonderful. <laughs> our, our theme for the week has been gardens and we have loved sharing our favourite garden things with you. Uh, but today's topic is mammals mm. and we have some very exciting things lined up. Yeah, coming up, uh, your questions answered by the brilliant Jess French. Yes. Uh, we will be looking at videos captured on our wildlife camera at the back of the garden stick around they're amazing absolutely amazing um and we'll show you how to make a hedgehog cafe thanks to the wonderful girls at the hedgehog friendly town yes and, and also we are going to be playing a game of who's poo <laughs> that's not going to get old guys that's not going to get old um if you go to the description box below this video you will find links to any of the online resources that we mention in the show there'll also be a bonus uh, video from my youtube channel that will fit today's theme so this is something from the hedgehog hospital we filmed a while back Ooh, it was one of the first films we ever made it was yeah it was and there's a subscribe button below if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button please do then you'll see anything that goes up on the youtube channel uh, also there's a bell there click that mm -hmm. you'll get notifications whenever we go live. So as always, Greg is driving the desk and we set up another camera at the beginning of this week. This is BirdCam, the camera on our bird feeders. They have been very busy this morning, but as always, as soon as we go live, they clear off. We were sat here five minutes before the show, thought we'd just chill out with a bit of BirdCam, and then we had uh, a robin and a blue tit and great tits were there as well and and now nothing nothing cheers nothing. guys cheers, uh, right the live chat is open hello uh, to jasmine uh, who's age three matthew and sophia hello well hello james from australia australia and also we've got uh, ella as well hello ella so if you are watching right now uh, say hello in the live chat if you're watching back at a later time just drop us a comment below we love to read them we do read them uh, during the afternoon so before we move on to our topic of mammals i just want to say thank you to all of the teachers that got in touch yesterday yeah. we asked if you'd like us to do a school shout out and you got in touch in your hundreds so we will be doing a special school shout out at the end of the show That's gonna be fun. and thank you to everyone for sending in your photos i can assure you that we read every single email and it hurts our souls that we can't feature all of the photos in the show but we do have a selection that were inspired that was in, that were inspired by yesterday's episode we sure do so here they are yeah there they go right here's the first one this is uh nayan and shay making a potato starter great yes. job boys and here we have molly she's also been making a well making her potato tubers there and it is molly's birthday today so happy <laughs> i should say it's her birthday tomorrow not oh. today tomorrow <laughs> um, uh, here's Oscar. Oh, hang on. Come on, Oscar. Now, Oscar. There's Oscar. Yeah, he's had um, he's had a great time watching us over the last few days. And he's already started his seedlings. Look how well they're doing. Wow, they look fantastic. Um, this is Evelyn, who's made her own little garden. Uh, she's planted nasturtiums, sunflower and basil seeds as well. Arthur here, um, he's been having great fun planting some chive and thyme seeds, but you might notice that Arthur actually really enjoyed spraying the plant <laughs> and the dog with water. <laughs> um, then we've got, uh, who's this? This is Jasper on this next picture. Mm. Um, oh, Jasper. Oh, look, planted crest seeds um, in eggs, in an egg box. And put those little googly eyes on. Aren't they great? Those I eyes are those amazing. So much. They're wicked. And um, here we have uh, Issa and Ada planting tomato seeds. Brilliant. Look how big that compost bag is. Um, <laughs> this is Kyle. Uh, Kyle lives in a flat and has a balcony uh, and decided to plant seeds in pots by the window and make mini greenhouses with plastic bottles and cling film. Genius. Nice. Uh, we've got two brothers here and Tom is going to be four on Sunday. <laughs> Uh, this family, this next family, they're having a potato growing competition. Mum's is the blue cup, Francesca's is yellow, Elizabeth is orange, Dad's is green. 
And finally, this picture here was made <laughs> by Austin. So if you were with us yesterday, uh, we, we did freeze. We dropped off air for a few minutes. And this was the screen that it ended on. And Austin thought it looked like you were dreaming of potatoes. I so he made that. that view. I love that so much. Yes. <laughs> yes, I was. Yeah. Um, um, Final lot of birthdays. Yes. Loads more birthdays to quickly get in. Today, we've got Finley, who's eight. Isaac, who's five. Ruby, who's one. Tomorrow, we've got Thomas, who's eight. Jacob, who's six. And Theo, who's six. <laughs> birthday thingy was as all around. <laughs> Happy birthday if it is your birthday today. So on with the show. Yes. And we are going to be talking about mammals. Yes. So unless you're seeing squirrels on your bird feeders like we are all the time, or maybe you have some cats in your neighbourhood, actually, it can be pretty tricky to spot British garden mammals. They're quite secretive and they tend to come out at night. We mm. say that they are... Nocturnal. Nocturnal. But just because we don't see them, it doesn't mean there aren't telltale signs that give us clues that they might be there. Mm. Hmm. What's that, do we think? Have a guess. <laughs> Here's a clue. Yes, it's poo. Yes. Or poop. Or yeah. droppings. Or scat. Guano. I think we'll stop you there. We'll stop you there, Greg. Sensible. There we yeah. go. <laughs> uh, poo is a great way to learn about the animals that are coming to a garden. Um, and the people, the fantastic people over at the RSPB have a quiz that we want to play with you right now. It's on their website. Link in the description below. Hang it is on. called... We need to do the quiz music. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Hang on. Can you imagine? Uh, let's go to this and let's do this. Hello. Quiz music. I hope you're ready to start. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, shall we play a game of Who's Poo? Okay, yes. let's bring up Who's Poo again. So, um, we are going to do this on their website. So, let's play now. <laughs> Who dropped off this stinker? Now, of course, we want to make sure that you lot are um, joining us at home. So uh, just have a look at the screen in front of you and uh, work out what do you think? Is it a badger, a fox, or an owl? What do you think, Greg? I'm going to go fox. Fox? Go okay, fox. all right, let's see. No! no! It was a badger! It was left by a badger! People all over the world will be screaming at you. Oh, that one I know. Okay, so who dropped off this stinker? A shrew, an owl, or a muntjac? So I actually think this might be a bit of a trick question. I think that's an owl. Mm. Because owls, you get all these kind of bits of whatever they've been eating. Yeah. But, oh, I know why you're saying it's a trick mm. question. Hang on, hang on, before we click before we click that. Oh, yeah. I know why you're saying it's a trick question. Go on. Am I, am I wrecking something for later? No, 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 not at all. Is it because um, for an owl, poo doesn't come out? No, no, no. Um, so oh. I actually think that's an owl pellet. Yeah. So it's not technically an owl poo, no. but owls cough up owl up. pellets. Yeah, it comes but up. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll um, find let's out. Let's see if that's the case. All right, let's go back to that. So let's and let's select one. owl. Yeah. Oh, it does say that. It's not actually a poo. It contains indigestible fur and bones, which the owl coughs up. Yeah, right. because they Who eat shrews and mice. This stinker. Bat, muntjac or rabbit? I, I got to guess. Go you got to guess at home? I'm going for rabbit. No, I think it's one next to it. Really? Oh. Okay, I'm going to go with you. Oh, you were oh, right. Oh, yeah, rabbit poos. You were right. I was right. Oh, no. Yes. I mean, I'm so cross. Yes. I knew I should have known yes. that. Right, should we do... They are um, similar looking. Should we do one more? Yeah. Okay, back to the poos. Who dropped off this stinker? I, I mean, not to be gross, but that's a bit of a wet one, isn't it? Uh, is it a shrew, an owl, or a bat? Oh. Well, we know it's not an owl. Bat? So it's a shrew or a bat. I would go shrew. Okay. Okay. Which one should we click on this time? I don't know. Let's go for your bat uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Oh, oh it is a bat. <gasps> to read it, it, read it. What does it say? It is a bat. A common piss bat can eat more than 3,000 something. It went. Well, it actually, went that's true. So bats, they do eat um, lots and lots of insects. And because some of those insects are beetles that have sort of um, shimmery, uh, I guess, almost like coats of armour on them, bat poo sometimes looks a little bit glittery. <laughs> Does it? Yeah, sometimes. Wow, that's an amazing Because of fact. all of the insect wings and the, the beetle minute. cases. That means that we eat. can do like a, a fact mind blown sound effect. No, we can't. Oh, never mind. Uh, let's try again. There, there we, we go. go. Better, so better. yeah. Bats sometimes, their poo sometimes looks shimmery and glittery. If you want to carry on the game of who's poo, then just go to the RSPB website. Mm -hmm. The link will be in the description below. That means it's the end of the quiz. Da, 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 da. Oh! I love the messages that said, 
I love the messages that said there was almost mass panic in our house when we didn't do the quiz music. <laughs> I agree with you. I had to, to hold off everything there. Today's but... show is the most ambitious we've actually had with tech. Yeah. There's so much going on. That's why I'm trying to keep track of it. Right, well, what are we go. on to next? So all of this talk of poo uh, is uh, definitely moving us on nicely to our, our next section of the show. So we told you that we had one of these. This is a wildlife camera. And we really wanted to put it at the back of our garden because we think we think we might have some mammals that are living there. Mm. Um, so we went out earlier on in the week and here is what happened. To set the camera up. I've got to get in there and you're coming with me. Come on, here we go. Good job, right, nearly there. Here we get. <laughs> you might be thinking, Maddie, why are you climbing in amongst the trees and the bushes at the back of the garden? Well, that's because we've actually noticed that there's a little bit of a clearing, a space just over there, which seems to have been made by some kind of large mammal. Um, and we're hoping that we might be able to find out what it is using the camera. And the reason we know that it's been there is because we've spotted something. Hang on, let's go take a look. That, we think, is deer poo. Yep. Let's get a close up. Nice. Not only can we see the deer poo, but it smells quite strongly here as well, so it's possible um, that any animal who might be using this space is scenting it to mark their territory, to tell other animals that this is their spot. But I can kind of see why they would choose it, because actually they're really well sheltered by these trees, but they can still look out on the garden. Check out this. So it's nice and safe, you're covered by the trees and the branches and the leaves, but you can still look out to see what's happening. I'm going to put the camera just here, pointing this way, so hopefully we'll see something on film. Ow, I'm stuck in the trees. Ow. There we go. Oh, there we go. Bit of branch in my hair. Lovely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, Greg, what do you notice about this camera? Well, firstly, that it's absolutely awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and secondly, that you can tell it's got this kind of fun well, not even a pattern on it. Mm. That's camouflage, we say, right? It kind yeah. of blurs into the background. Yeah, the case has actually got like leaves printed onto it. So what's the benefit of this being camouflaged? So that the animals that you're trying to spot don't see it, mm -hmm. uh, so that they're not spooked by it. Mm -hmm. So they come up nice and close. Yeah, it's not going to distract them either. So hopefully we were going to uh, see some animals in their natural habitat. I went back and this is what happened. Hang on. Oh, okay. I went back and this is what happened. Nice. Day three in the uh, wildlife camera den at the back of the garden. I'm going in and I'm going to uh, replay some of the photos and videos to see if we've got anything so far. It still smells back here though. Maybe that's a good sign. It's free. Okay, let's prop you up just here. So far, there's an awful lot of my shoe. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's deaf. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what, what did you see? <laughs> Okay. Don't leave it there. So I can I've not tell... seen any of these. Right, I, I've deliberately kept all of this a secret from Greg. Um, so this is really fun for me. But I can tell you, it is busy. That is a busy little space at the back of our garden. We should just say that's just um, just a few trees right at the back of the garden. Yeah, I was amazed, absolutely amazed. Um, but let's let's build up. So first of all, I know this is a mammal episode, but there have been a lot of birds who have been hopping around. That we don't always see these on bird feeders because a lot of these are ground feeder. So ground feeder. <laughs> birds so here we've, here we've got some of the birds that we the camera so that there is a thrush but watch what it does oh, oh. does a little poo <laughs> hang on there you go <laughs> and watch who flies in now do you know what that is blue tit yeah that's a blue tit so we do tend to see those on the feeders here is a very messy blackbird that's a male blackbird because it's black with that orange beak and it's probably looking for oh what have we got here that's a female blackbird Oh. So she's she's brown in colour. And now who's next? Oh, it's a robin. Yeah, lots of robins, lots of robins back there. And That's I great. think there's one more as well. The next one is a dunnock. You can see oh. it. it's so well camouflaged, we just like our camera. On Monday, didn't we? Yeah, isn't it lovely? Okay, so, right. So we saw loads of birds. Yeah, lots of Wicked birds. Footage. I love that. Thank you. But now let's move on to mammals. I was hoping there was more. So what do we see loads of in the in the garden? 
pigeons. And uh, what mammal? Squirrels. 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 The squirrels are Those very acrobatic. Yesterday evening, actually, when we were writing the show, there was one that was like hanging down and properly getting in and nicking all the food. I was right, like, well, get it, off. Might, it might be this squirrel here. Oh, okay, so on. one of them has been playing get number two. at the back of the garden. I love these guys. Ooh, play. So you can actually Ooh. see the squirrel's got something in its mouth. Yeah, what's it got in its mouth? Probably just some sort of big seed, but I think it's burying it there. Because then um, next clip, it doesn't have it anymore. But look at it, look at it looking for for food, seeds. Maybe it's got a little stash. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon it's seen its reflection. I think so. It's definitely it's noticed to work the out camera. What's going on. But it's um, jumping about, and then just when you think it's gone, wait for it. Wait for <laughs> it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Photo bombing squirrel. So the next mammal that we saw on the camera, I actually thought at first it might be a badger and I got really excited. It wasn't a badger though. Um, here's what it was, Greg. Okay. What is this? Well, you can see what I thought yeah, it might yeah, be a yeah. badger. I was like, I was like, what is that? What Black is that? and white fur. What is that night? That's... It's a cat. It's a cat. It's a cat. But I thought that maybe that might explain the smell back there because actually cats, they do spray their territory. They mark their scent everywhere. Oh. And I thought it's more likely to be the cat than the other animal. So here we go. Oh. This is the finale. We've got one more. We do. I this is what four. we were hoping for because, of course, we saw that deer poo. <gasps> so I was very excited, Greg. I know. I was very Come excited on. to see this. Okay. What do you think? Oh, my, that's a deer. I know. It's I a know. bit. It's, it's two legs of a deer. It's a deer. Yes. Look at it. Yes. So that is a Munt Jack deer. They're Whoa. quite short and stocky, but oh. it didn't just visit us in the. Look, look at its face. Look at the markings on its face. Pretty, isn't it? Wow. But it did also come back at night time. <gasps> oh my goodness. This is amazing. I know. Can you believe that's actually happening at the bottom of our garden? We don't even know. You absolute legend. I know. I know. Isn't that awesome? That's incredible. I know. That is super yeah, cool. All of that in two nights. Cool, right? Oh, so, that's amazing. Yes. Um, I, I guess I'll tell you a little bit about Munch Yeah, Deer. tell us. Yeah. Um, so... They, they they generally live by themselves. They live alone. So we say that they are solitary. But sometimes you might have um, a mum and a baby or a dad and a baby. Um, we call a we call a, a lady deer a doe and then a male deer doe, is a buck. A deer, a female deer. Hey, stop. There we okay. go. <laughs> um, we hear weird noises mm -hmm. sometimes from the garden, which has got to be an animal. Is that... The muntjac. Yeah, yeah. So actually, muntjac are sometimes known as the barking deer. Yes, that's what I'd heard. Yeah, they do make bar, bar, sort of barking sounds. And they're actually very loud for their size because they are pretty short and stocky as deers go. I, um, I had no idea oh, well, yeah. oh, about any of these. Oh. Thanks. Thanks. Don't put me in charge of sound effects. Don't put, that was amazing. <laughs> There you go. That so we were very, very happy with that. But anyway, onwards yes. and more about you. So we asked you for your questions about British mammals and we thought, hmm, who could answer these? Yes. And we had to get in touch with Jess French. She is a brilliant presenter, author, vet, naturalist, zoologist, entomologist. She wrote this book, how to help a hedgehog. So she was the perfect person to get in touch with. Now, the thing is, Jess lives somewhere super cool in the countryside, has pretty sketchy internet. So mm. we were never going to be able to get her up live. So we chatted to her yesterday, didn't we, Mads? Yes, we did, her? we did. Um, so here is past Jess. Hello, Jess. <laughs> is she there? Is she with us? Even, even in the past? Jess? Hi, Maddie. Hi, Greg. Oh, I'm so excited to answer these questions. <laughs> All right. So there is Jess from the past. Um, but yes, questions, right? Here we go. So Cecilia and Blaze got in touch and they found a hedgehog in their garden when they were tidying. Here's now they were really excited wow. um, to see that this hedgehog was napping, but then it left the next day. So they wanted to ask Jess, what could they do to help encourage hedgehogs back into their garden? And here's what, here's what past Jess said. How amazing to find that hedgehog napping in your garden. Super cool. Hopefully there's something we can do about getting it back. My two top tips for uh, attracting hedgehogs to your garden are 
firstly, make sure they can get in and out. Hedgehogs can travel up to a mile for their foraging missions at night when they're looking for something to eat. So you need to make sure it doesn't get stuck outside of your garden and also can get back in once it's been foraging. And it could be something really, really simple like just cutting a hole in the bottom of your fence or making sure there's space under the hedge or, or whatever you've got around the edge of your garden. Um, and secondly, make a space where it will feel safe to snuggle up in the day while it's sleeping. So something like a pile of old logs or you can buy hedgehog houses as well, but I'm sure you could just make something with what you've got hanging around in your garden. Thank you very, very much, Jess. Great answer. Um, next one, Hope would like to ask, why do mammals not have cold blood? Ooh. Tricky question. I think what Hope's talking about there is the fact that mammals can control their own body temperature. So cold-blooded animals, like uh, snakes and lizards and other reptiles, they have to heat up their body using an external source of heat, for example, laying in the sun. Mammals, on the other hand, can control their own body temperature. If they're feeling cold, they can shiver or increase their metabolism to make themselves feel warmer. That's why warm-blooded animals like polar bears can live in really cold places and still not get cold. Really good. How Thank you for that? everyone saying, Jess is a little quiet. Um, I've turned her up as much as I can. What, oh. I'll do, what I'll do is I'll turn us down a bit. Okay. Yeah, and then you can turn the whole thing up and then hopefully we won't be too loud. There okay. you go, that's a good plan. Um, so next up, Connie and Florence, they sent us a video from their papa's garden um, of a badger. Can we Watch see this. that? So that badger there is sort of scrabbling around and Connie and Florence wanted to know, why is it digging in the grass rather than in the soil? Do you think it might be looking for worms by digging with its claws? Oh yeah, look, we're about, to, we're about to see the digging, look. Yeah, That's amazing. Yeah, so why do you think it might be doing that and why would it be on the grass? Amazing video! That was absolutely incredible. I think you're completely right. I think it was uh, probably looking for worms. Probably any mini beast that it could find, really. They particularly love beetle grubs, um, but they also will eat uh, the roots of plants as well. So it could be looking for any of those things. Well, there you go. Um, that is all we have time for because we've got so much, so much <laughs> packed into today's show. So thank you so much to Dr. Jess French for all of that. We really appreciate her time. She's awesome. Yes. And um, we couldn't, of course, leave you without a weekend project. So this is your weekend project. And we chatted with Kyra and Sophie, who are from the hed Hedgehog Friendly Town. I always struggle to say that. Hed hedgehog Friendly Town. Um, about how to make a hedgehog cafe. Right, so Kyra and Sophie, they have been rescuing, looking after and releasing hedgehogs back into the wild for over four years now. They started when they were really, there they are, <laughs> they started when they were really, really young. Um, at first the girls would just feed up the hedgehogs until they could be released, but since then they've actually been trained, so now they can um, give the hedgehogs medicine and really help them get better That's again. Awesome. Yeah. And um, before we show you a video of some cute hedgehogs, cute hedgehog klaxon, um, <laughs> What you, this is what you're going to need if you mm. want to make your own hedgehog cafe this weekend. Okay, we've got right. the bits. So you might need, if you want to make one of these yourself, um, a plastic storage tub, the sort Check. of thing that would go under a bed, really. Pop that just there. Steady. I got it. Um, you're going to need some, some of these, sort of like dishes. Little food dishes. Yeah, quite shallow dishes, though. Hedgehogs are really messy. So if you make them shallow, then it's easier for them to get to their okay, food. Okay, cool. What else? Um, when it comes to feeding, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're going to need some of these. Uh, oh, go. yeah, just give that to me. Cool, a brick. Uh, lots of people saying they love <laughs> Maddie's fox jumper. Oh, uh, and also thanks to the people who've noticed that I've gone for Fancy Friday and brought the garden inside. All right, Corey, carry on. Okay, so here's what you're going to want to do. First of all, with your storage tub, you need to get an adult, because this bit's really tricky, to cut a hole um, about the size of a DVD into the side of the uh, storage tub. Now, this is where your hedgehog is going to go into the storage tub. Gotcha. Now, if I open up the lid here, we're going to take one of the bricks yep. and we're going to make a corner. It's almost like making um, a living room and a kitchen, okay? Mm. Now you're going to put the food, uh, when you're putting food out for hedgehogs, you want to stick to cat food or dog food. That's it. And um, they do like mealworms as well, but they're trickier to get hold of. So you're going to put that in the dish with a little, with some water as well. That would be nice. And then you're, hang on, your hedgehog <laughs> going to come into the entrance. 
and it has to go around the brick to go and get something to eat. Now this is important because it means that if um, a predator, like a cat, wanted to try and get to the hedgehog, it can't get to it because of the bricks in the way, so it means the hedgehog that has somewhere safe to clever. go. clever. Very clever. So you're going to then put the lid back on, yeah. and then you can pop a brick on top. My goodness, I was bored of holding a brick. <laughs> <laughs> and that is going to weight everything down. And then you want to put your whole cafe under um, some bushes, somewhere where it's darker and leafy, where the hedgehogs will feel safe. So that is it. So uh, Kyra and Sophie uh, made a little video to show us this again, but with their super cute hedgehogs. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they sweet? They are so hang on, hang on, I'm getting something. <laughs> what are you getting? I'm getting a hedgehog back because we've got to do a selfie. <laughs> oh, we have to do a selfie. Right, we forgot this yesterday and boy oh boy did you let us know. Um, thank you though. We looked at the comments after us and everyone was like, selfie, right, get ready. I've got a big hedgehog. Uh, <laughs> get ready to do the selfie. Get yourself in front of the screen. Can they see you though? Yeah, they can see me. There okay. you go. Uh, yeah, ready. Three, two, one. It's always so quiet and awkward. It's really weird. Okay, and good. your hedgehog looks I hope you got the absurd. Self. It, yeah, it is a little bit of a silly looking Right. Um, we okay. should say, this is our email address. Um, so if you do go and make a hedgehog cafe and you want to send some photos, uh, we get all the images that we use in the show from these emails. We've had like a thousand emails this week, which is... Overwhelmed. Absolutely Overwhelmed. incredible. It's, it's so wonderful. Right. Right. Uh, but Onwards. we are going to share a few more of your brilliant photos. We do want to show as many of them as possible. So here we go. Um, uh, right, this is... These are some uh, you've sent us throughout one, the week. This one. Whoa! I know. So Oliver here saw this fox in his garden, which is awesome. That's an incredible photo. I know, how lucky. Um, next up is Lucas. He had a hedgehog, hedgehog cake for his birthday. You really do struggle with that word. I do, don't I? It turns <laughs> out. Um, Isla has been building a home for her squirrel ready for today's show. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Uh, this is River, Florence and Esme. Oh my word. This is a squirrel assault course feeder. And down the bottom left there, you've got them in a hide. That's yeah. amazing. Isn't that brilliant? So much fun. I want to try that. And um, here is uh, Tilly and Karis. They're planting seeds, but they had to do a bit of improvising. And they're actually using an egg box as a propagator, which is a brilliant idea. Great one. Uh, last picture. Uh -huh. oh. This is great. So actually, so yesterday, oh, yesterday we all learned that beans are seeds. And Greg told us that you like to have. Well, I said it wrong first, didn't I? I said I liked, well, then we got it right. I like cheese and seeds and seeds on toast, on toast. yes yeah because we don't beads of seeds yeah so and james wanted to send in a picture of his uh cheese and seeds toasty which we thought was wonderful it. good work james yeah everyone should be eating that mm. um that's pretty much it let's well, just let's just take a minute to say thank you to all the amazing teachers that have got in touch yeah. so um firstly all the teachers that taught you in school, but also mm -hmm. all the people that are now helping teach you while you're at home. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are at home with a grown up who, is, you know, they're learning along with you, which we absolutely yeah. love. If you're with them, go up to them and give them a little fist bump and say cheers. Say thanks very much. Nice one. Little fist bump. Yes, Wicked. definitely. Um, but now we need to do these hundreds of school shout outs, Mads. Yeah, it's school shout out time. So I think, I think we can maybe uh, kick this off. School bell time. With Here we go bell. with the school shout outs. And we're going to take this uh, old school and funky for our shout outs today. Yeah. So please do dance along. Funky school shout outs. How's the sound? You start. Okay, everybody. First up, we're going to say a big hello from Miss Draycott to St. Anne Wells uh, Academy in Nottingham. You've got Miss Tattershall says hello to reception class at Sismary Primary School in Birdport. <laughs> Bridport. Bridport. <laughs> Mrs. Heron says hi to Holy Trinity Primary School in Briarfield. We've got Mrs. Hilditch says hello to all of the children watching at home from Pondersbury Primary School and to those children of key workers who are watching at school. A shout out to Holy Trinity Primary School in Taunton. Next, you've got Liz Campbell, head teacher, wants to say hi to students of Tudor CE Primary School. Uh, hello to Greenfield School in Woking. Big shout out too to Miss Scott and Watlington Primary School. 
Sarah Marshall Morn, who is a private tutor. Uh, she'd love to give a shout out to all of her wise owls. Uh, you've got Mrs Gore, another head, to another head teacher, <laughs> proud of all of her students at Pikemere School in Cheshire. Hello to the Pinewood Infant and Foundation Unit in Nottingham. Shout out to the teachers at Rugby Free Primary School who are setting amazing learning for their students. Hello to Friends Prep School in Lisbon, Northern Ireland. Three more. <laughs> Mrs Hurley and Mrs Hutt say hello to their students from Hayden Abbey School. Mr Rain, a big shout out to Ashcombe School Woking. And... Last but not least, hello to all the children who are home educated, who have been home educated and are tuning in. Hello to you lovely lot. Wow. School is out of session. <laughs> that was bold and I loved it. <laughs> so that is the end of the show and we really are thankful to every single one of you for getting involved. What a week it has been. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. It was a bonkers idea last weekend. Yeah. You said, please do it. We ran with it. It's basically been our full-time job yeah. um, and then some, and we're, we're loving it. Yeah. If you do want to get in touch, if you want to tag us on social media, there are mm -hmm. handles. Please do share that we are doing this, please. Every weekday at 11. Uh -huh. uh, if you want to send us a photo or anything, the email address is up there. Yeah, next week's theme is brilliant bodies yes. and we have a lot of ideas already for yeah, it and some great special guests planned mm -hmm. as well and um, that's pretty much it from us have a wonderful wonderful weekend we will see you next week monday at 11 we will indeed as always stay curious uh, see you then bye, bye.